Hi, this is Matt with Calgary Business Blog, and this is a video about Monte Carlo simulations and random samples from standardized normal distributions. Uh, hopefully you are reading my article about stochastic calculus and have arrived at this section, so let's dive right in. These are the equations that we have been working with. This is our 30% annual volatility. This is our 15% expected annual return. And with a little bit of algebra, we got down to this equation here. But what is epsilon? So epsilon is a random sample from a standardized normal distribution. It is going to multiply our volatility by a certain amount to simulate the random fluctu fluctuations observed in real world interest rates, derivative values, or in our case, stock prices. So how do we calculate epsilon? Well, the first thing that we need to use is the random number generator in Excel. This is simply the rand function. What it does is it produces a number from 0 to 1 that is evenly distributed. The probabilities are evenly distributed. Now, we want a random sample from a normal distribution. So that's where the norm s inv function comes in. What it does is it changes the probability distribution that would look like a big rectangle really into this perfect bell curve. And that in turn gives us the z-score. Now the only thing I really want to say about the norm sm function is that if if this doesn't come to you intuitively, it's best just to kind of screw around. Here I've got my uh, random number, and if I do anything under 0.5, it's negative. And uh, as you can see here, this is 0.342 above our 0.5, which is our uh, kind of middle point between negative and positive numbers and 0.342 or 0.341, this is just a rounding error, is the cumulative probability of anything between 0 and 1 standard deviation here, right? So uh, it's best just to play around with it until you get comfortable with that. But anyways, the z-score is what is going to shock our volatility. So, to get our percent change, it's pretty, it's exactly this calculation here, very simple. It's our z-score, our epsilon, times our volatility weekly, plus our uh, weekly drift, which is just another um, term for expected return, so our weekly expected return. Now, the only other thing that I would like to mention is that the change in price. You can see here we want to use the exponent times the percent change times the original value to get uh, values at the end of week one and week two and that's because we like to use continuously compounded uh, returns and, and uh, continuously compounded uh, rates So after we have the price at the end of week one, we want a price for the end of week two, and we can do this all the way up to week 52 because we have a time continuous model. So as you will see, the price uh, it, at the end of week two is simply the end of week one's price times the exponent and the percent change in week two. Now our model says, this goes right up to 52 weeks, our model says that the initial price is 100 and after uh, 52 weeks it's uh, $120.32. Now we know we're not going to say with any sort of certainty that it's going to be a hundred and twenty dollars at the end of the year. So this is where the Monte Carlo uh, processes 
come in. What we do is we repeat this simulation ideally thousands of times to create our own probability distribution. You can see every time I recalculate we're gonna get a different number. Sometimes it's above 100, sometimes it's below, sometimes it's way above and sometimes it's way below. So what we do is we do this simulation thousands of times which is easily done on modern ERP systems and then we create our pr own probability distributions so that we can make statements such as the model indicates that 95 percent of the time the price will be with between uh, we'll say eighty seven dollars and hundred and thirty dollars so these are just some variations of the model and that is because every time new random numbers are generated that affects the volatility much differently. So what I have done over here is previously I had done a hundred trials and marked them down and put them into a histogram. So this is something that uh, you will see and you can make and it's easy to access your own probability distribution so I can say that uh, nine the model demonstrated that nine percent of the time uh, it would the expected stock price would be between 62 and well 61.8 and 76.6 dollars now you can see that this uh, distribution looks weird no, it's not any sort of normal distribution. It will approach normality uh, the more trials you get with a, a slight skew. Um, it will, should have a slight skew like this because our uh, drift stays constant, right? That will be the long march upward where volatility dominates in the short run you know, drift tends to dominate in the long term, but uh, you can see that drift is uh, masked out quite nicely by uh, our, our larger volatility. But anyways, the two key takeaways from here are uh, how to perform the random sample from a standardized normal distribution, our little E epsilon here that we've been talking about, and how to perform Monte Carlo simulations, which is simply plugging this continuous time model into a, a time series and running the model over and over and over and over oops and over and over again in order to create your own probability distributions anyways i hope that helps thanks for watching bye